Welcome back to Factorio Demystified. Our topic for this session is entry-level modules. What do they do? How can we effectively use them in our factory? First up, let's establish a baseline for comparison later on what our power and pollution situation is. So we're using about roughly 29 megawatts of power, and I have already put up the machines for the accumulators. So I'm not going to be adding any more machines over the next couple episodes at least, but we just have a set in time baseline of what we're going to be using. And then on the pollution side of things, if we bring that up. Now we are having a gradual increase trend line from machines that have recently been built, but it's going to level out about 1100, 1150 pollution per minute. So that's our starting point. The three module types that we have available are the red productivity, the blue speed, and the green efficiency. We'll be covering them in that order. Most of the machines we're currently using can accept two or three modules at this stage of the game. And if we look at the assembly machine two here, that's what these slots right here are for. Notice they're only allowing though speed and efficiency. And the reason for that is productivity is probably the most popular module to use. It's the most complicated, the most powerful one. It says it's usable only on intermediate products. That's just basically a balancing mechanism so that they're not completely overpowered. And what exactly is and isn't an intermediate product can be kind of questionable. But for example, power poles, inserters, transport belts, assembly machines, radars, those types of final machines that we're going to place directly on the game map and have it work for us, those are not intermediates. However, plastic or circuits or iron gear wheels, items that we're going to use further on to make something else, those generally are considered intermediates and we can use productivity modules for those. So what do these do? Down a little further, we see the numbers that are given to us. Energy consumption plus 40%, pollution plus 5%, speed minus 5%, all of those are negatives. What we get in exchange for that is plus 4% productivity. And that uses the same idea that the mining productivity we've already seen does. You're getting free items without having to have the machine run, without consuming the resources that would normally be required. And so what happens with productivity modules a lot is players will stack them at multiple tiers and really get a multiplying or compounding effect. So for example, if we had productivity modules in our refineries and then also in our chemical plants and then the further chemical plants where we're making plastic and sulfuric acid, it'll just stack those benefits on top of each other and really achieve a huge savings in the amount of resources that are required and how hard those machines have to work. You're gonna pay a big bill for that in terms of the energy and speed and pollution and all of that. But if you're wanting to get a bunch of free resources and not have to consume as many raw resources, this is really a very powerful way that you can get that done. Now, the way they work if you're putting multiple modules in one machine is it adds together the bonuses or negatives. It doesn't multiply them. So for example, if we had two of these productivity modules in a machine, we're gonna have 40% energy consumption twice, or it's gonna be an increase of 80%. It's not multiplying them out, it's simple addition. One item though that I think Factorio doesn't really explain to the player, in fact, I think it implies the opposite of the way it actually works, is that notice you have the energy consumption and the pollution line, but there's also pollution involved in the increased energy consumption. Pollution of a machine is proportional to how much energy it's using. So, if we have plus 40% energy consumption, we have plus 40% pollution. They have to add that on to the pollution number at the bottom. And that's going to be very important in my decision how to use these because I actually go somewhat against the most common way of doing it, of getting a bunch of free items. What I'm looking for is the lowest pollution per item. But you don't have to do it that way. It all depends on your philosophy of what your goals are with your factory, as we've said before. So moving on to the speed, the blue modules, these are gonna give us increased energy consumption quite a lot, but we're also gonna get additional speed. So more products out of this machine over time. And a couple of really popular ways to use these are one in oil pump jacks, because as the yield from a pump jack will gradually dwindle, then you can put speed modules in there to keep that high and not have to go out find a whole nother oil area, set up a whole bunch of new pump jacks, just get as much as you can out of that one or 
relatively small group of areas. A lot of players don't really like having to go hunt around and finding a bunch of more oil locations. And depending how scarce oil is on your map, that can really be something that can benefit you. Another aspect that's not nearly as obvious, but is definitely often used, is to put a speed module with productivity modules. One speed module plus two or three productivity modules in a machine, depending on how many that machine can take. And the reason for that is, it sounds sort of counterintuitive. Why wouldn't I want the max you know, productivity bonus I can get? But each productivity module is going to slow that machine down. And so what you're actually doing is you're taking a smaller productivity number by adding that one speed module in, but then you're getting a speed multiplier. So you're not getting as many free items per process, but what you are getting is more processes running to the point where you're actually going to get more free items from that machine than you would if you just put them all out as productivity. So if you want the most free items over time, Generally speaking, two or three productivity plus one speed is the way that you're going to want to go, particularly as you get into higher tiers. And you can work out the math if you want to get really specific about that. I don't want to dive super deep into the numbers in this series, but that is worth considering. Then the efficiency modules, and that's going to be my all-star. This is why I have, notice I'm not building any speed in a chest here. I've got one chest, one machine doing productivity, but I've got four at the moment. I won't have it this way indefinitely but I've got four making myself efficiency. And these reduce energy consumption by quite a bit, but that's all that they do. So we can see here, minus 30% for each module, and then the minimum is 20%. You can never go lower than that. So if I had two of these in a machine, okay, that's down to 40%. Three of them would take it down to 10%, but you lose some of what that third module is gonna give you because there is that floor at 20% consumption. But of course, for me, the key point is that we're also reducing pollution. So with my focus on lowering pollution, we can actually get this down then to a fifth of the normal pollution in a lot of these machines, or at least put two of them in and get it down to less than half and really drop that pollution bill hard. So that's my goal, the way I'm approaching it. I want to have the least amount of pollution per item. That's my metric for deciding where I'm going to put my modules. So if we grab these then, let's go for a little walk and see where we might want to throw some in the machine. Now obviously mining drills are gonna be a huge priority because of how much total pollution we're getting from those. But a couple items I wanna do first. I strongly recommend your first modules you get and when you upgrade to the next tier of modules also, putting productivity in your labs. And the reason is, if you look at the stats here, they don't pollute at all by nature. So we're not increasing pollution at all because it doesn't matter what you multiply zero by, it's still going to be zero. And then all of the different science packs that are coming in here, we're going to get more use out of all of them. Since these are gonna be using, I mean, now three to four science packs, it'll be five to six later on, that is a lot of resources that simply don't need to come into the system if we put productivity in here. And then the energy level isn't that high, so we're not going to be having a hugely increased power bill here either because we just don't have that many labs and it's not that much to run each of them. So after you have put all of your modules in the labs, I really would say the second most important thing is double check them. Make sure all of your labs have the next tier of productivity. It's that powerful, it's that important. So then, not so much in terms of what they pollute, but the actual power bill. The refineries, again, almost half a megawatt each. So I'm definitely going to throw in efficiency modules in these. And all of these, all of our chemical plants can take three modules each. And so I'm just gonna slap all these in here. And this is going to go a significant ways already in lowering our power bill down to a lower level for us to be able to handle. And of course, indirectly, lowering our power right now also lowers our pollution because of the steam power. So we don't want to forget about that. But we'll definitely be going back to focusing in on the mining drills, as that's where the lion's share of that pollution is going to ultimately come from once we get through these. However, there are still occasional machines, very occasional, but ones where I will advocate putting production modules in. And those are the ones that, if it uses a lot of items, a lot of raw materials quickly, 
then it can still, you can actually have less pollution per item by just saving on those items with productivity. And sulfuric acid is a really good example of this. Because it's consuming five sulfur every second, plus the other items. So saving some of that sulfur means saving from these. It means saving on the cracking operation, the refining operation, the pumping operation from the pump jacks. Everything up and down that chain is going to need to be used less and therefore pollute less. And so when you actually do the math, then these are better to have productivity modules than they are to have the efficiency ones. But that's a very unusual case, and for the most part, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm just going to set up my efficiencies in the rest of these chemical plants, and then we're going to get those out to the mining drills and see how much of impact that will have. Now down in the coal mining area, we'll get some efficiency modules in these in a moment. But before we do that, let's update our power and pollution numbers. So we can see, okay, maybe we're around 25 megawatts. We've saved about 4 megawatts now. We have efficiency modules in all of our chemical plants and all our refineries. And then if we look at the pollution side of all that, we can see, particularly if we focus in on these, this is the refineries, this is the chemical plant. Look at those drops. And that's the pollution coming out of those. I mean, at this point, the refineries, pollution-wise, I mean, they exist, but they might as well not. So we want to definitely extend that now to our ever-polluting mining drills here. We'll just work our way down. And I think this is also a good time to just, if you haven't done it recently, go around and pick up any mining drills that aren't working anymore. And clear up any stray power poles that you don't need, whatever. For example, I don't need to put more efficiency modules in you because you have run completely out. And so we'll just keep moving around, throwing these in, then we'll come over here, and then we'll go back and get refilled in a moment. Let's keep chopping that bill down. Jumping forward, we now have most, not all, but most of our mining drills fully saturated with the efficiency modules. The big copper field in the west doesn't have them, but everything else does. Okay, how much of a difference did that make? Well, a few more megawatts knocked down of our power. Maybe we're down to about 22 megawatts roughly there. And if we take a look at our pollution bring everything back up. This was consistently around 550 or so. And now it's at 165. And the overall, the total bill, if we throw all these together, is maybe 500 per minute at most, compared to you know 1,100 or so we were before. We've already cut it more than in half, and we haven't done everything yet. We still have the boiler running, which is gonna be the subject of our next episode because we don't want to have that steam power running if we can avoid it. And we still have all of our assembly machines. I haven't put any in those. We haven't upgraded these to our electric furnaces. So there's a lot more that we can do, but we've already made a huge difference in the operations of the factory. A couple of final observations that are not necessarily particularly intuitive. A lot of players will use productivity modules in the assemblers that make science packs. There's a lot to be said for that. We got sulfur coming in. We've got red advanced circuits coming in. We've got all the stuff coming in here for the engine units. Let's save on all that material. Well, mathematically, at this stage, with what we have in the Tier 1 modules, I'm actually going to be spending four times as much pollution per item on these science packs if I add productivity compared to if I put efficiency in. And the reason for that is how long they run. Machines that take a long time to produce something they have to save a ton of material to make up that gap, and these are 24 second time for two or 12 seconds for one. Now, if you're not focused in on pollution, but you're focused in on productivity, then you might want to go that way, or maybe you want to balance things out a little bit more. There's definitely good reasons to put productivity modules in here, but I just sort of wanted to get into the why I'm not doing it. Then out here, our pollution is actually somewhat larger than it was when we started putting modules in. That's because it was already pushing outwards the beginning of that increased pollution from all the machines. And often players will look at the situation and be like, well, why isn't my pollution withdrawing? And we can see it very gradually actually starting to withdraw now. But 
focus on and trust the numbers in your productivity tab. You know, what's what's listed under here for pollution. Use that as your guide in how you're actually doing. It takes pollution a while to spread when you produce a bunch more, but by the same token, it takes it a while to fade away and be absorbed if you've made some changes. So you really need to look at this in advance and plan things out and not expect it to have immediate impact. But also, if we had not put in all of the modules that we have been doing, we would have polluted now into this nest and they would have attacked us or we'd have to go out there and attack them ahead of time. So we've already bought ourselves from leeway there. When we return, we will be diving into the accumulators, our next step, and becoming fully independent of steam power, which will be relegated to a purely backup role. Looking forward to that. See you next time when Factorio Demystified returns.